everyone, this is Miss Janelle from the Ella Johnson Library and we are here for another Little Stitches. So today we are going to do what is called a batik dyeing technique. Now what that is, is basically a wax resist dyeing technique for fabric, kind of like what we did on the Starry Night with the paper, um, watercolor, and crayons. So batik usually uses um, wax, uh, paraffin or beeswax and you draw a design in the wax which will hold the whiteness or whatever color fabric you have and then you layer colors to dye over top of it then you melt the wax off and you have the white lines and then the colored design usually people do this in layers so you can get different colors wax it again uh, dye it something else and kind of build up a different sort of colored layer, almost like tie-dye. So in the kit that you picked up from the library, what you will have is a couple pieces of cotton, some acrylic paint, you will also have some school glue, and what you will need to do is to create a design. So I have already created my design. You'll wanna do this on a piece of paper, and your fabric's pretty sheer, so what you're gonna probably need to do is use a marker, to kind of darken it so that we could trace it with a pencil. So I'm just gonna darken this right now with my permanent marker. And you can use any design you want. It could be abstract, it could be a picture, it could be flowers, it could be an animal, whatever you'd like to do. So what we will do is we're going to take our drawing, we're going to place the fabric over top of it and then we are going to trace our design in glue or if you'd like to do it in pencil first you can do that as well um, if you do use pencil you will have to wash the fabric after you have done everything so that you can get the pencil marks off i usually don't use a pencil to outline i usually just do the glue so we have our design looks great before you start your actual gluing and dyeing, you will need to pre-wash the fabric. You can see that I've washed my fabric. If you don't do that, what might happen is the glue won't adhere to the fabric because it has been starched. Um, so I would recommend washing it in the washing machine or you can hand wash it, let it dry completely, and then you can begin. So I have my design and you can see it through there. And what you're going to do is take your glue and you're just going to trace it. Very simple. Now you're going to want to be a little bit gentle when applying. Because you only want to put glue where the lines are. So that might require you to go back over top of it a little bit. Kind of fill in the gaps. I have also put glue inside of other containers with finer tips than this. If you want to have really, really thin lines, you can do that. And we're just going to trace. After you have completely traced everything in glue, Next, you just have to wait for it to dry, which probably is the hardest part. But after it's dried comes the fun part, where you get to paint on your fabric with your acrylic paint. You can also use, um, if you happen to have dyes, you can use dyes. Um, that could be fabric dye, it could be uh, food coloring will also work. If you want to do something really interesting, you can also dilute um, Kool-Aid and create dye with that as well, which we will have another video coming up on how to dye with Kool-Aid. Just going back over my lines here, making sure I fill in the gaps. And make sure that you're working on a table that's pretty level so your glue doesn't start to slide off. 
I'm creating kind of a mandala flower. Where's my design? So I'm going to continue tracing and when we come back, I will have this all dry and we can start with our dyeing. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, now that our glue is pretty much all the way dry, um, you can see it got a little bit wrinkly. I did, after I started um, doing the glue, I put it on some wax paper because this fabric is so thin, you'll probably get a little bit of seepage through the bottom, which is totally okay. Um, so some of my glue kind of morphed with the lines, but that's okay, that's no big deal. So now we're going to start to dye. Now what we need is our acrylic paint and we're gonna need to thin it out with a little bit of water. So I'm gonna put my paint here. Next to my fabric. If you have a paper plate, you can use that to mix the water in a little bit. The um, kit that you got from the library will have all of your paint in little paint pods. So you'll just need to have a cup of water and your brush and then you can start painting. You don't need a lot of paint for this. Just a little goes a long way. Like I said, just thin it out a little bit with some water. And it's gonna kind of be like a water color. It's going to absorb into the fabric. That's why you don't need too much. And it's okay if you get it on the glue a little bit because what the glue is doing is it's stopping the paint from absorbing into other places. So you can see I kind of brush it up onto the glue and it's just gonna sit there. I think you wanna go back and add a little bit more paint on top of it and make it a little bit darker. You can do that too. Kind of a nice little pattern going. And if your brush isn't small enough to get into the crevices, you can kind of create like a little drop with the water and it'll be absorbed into the fabric because the fabric is dry. I'm just going to go around and add my color. And you can mix the colors that you have too. It doesn't have to be straight from the um, bottle. And you can see that some of my color is bleeding a little bit, but that's okay. Now I did lose a little bit of the definition of some of the um, triangles that I made in the corner, but that's okay. Batik isn't really about being exact and precise with your color. Uh, it's about creating really interesting patterns and designs. And sometimes the most interesting patterns and designs that you get are from little accidents where your glue might run together a little bit or you might have some color bleed, but that's totally okay. And it takes a couple tries to get it to kind of look the way that you want it to. And that's totally okay. 
You got a couple different pieces of fabric, so you can test out one and try and see if your design works, and if it doesn't, on the second piece of fabric, you can try a different design. So I went with a more of a simple design for mine, just because I wanted to create more of a concentrated form in the middle of the fabric. green color out a little bit more. I don't want to push too much on here. I think there's a big glue dot. So I kind of just want to be gentle around the glue dot. Because I am using so much water with this particular color. If you put too much water on, it might lift the glue before you want it to lift. So just be careful of that. Because what the glue is doing is it's holding the place for you. So that when you are done with your coloring, you're going to remove the glue. And you can do that either by washing the fabric in lukewarm water with a lot of soap or if you put enough glue on top, you might be able to peel it off too. It just depends on how you used your glue, if you used thin lines or thick lines. If you used thick lines, you should be able to peel the glue right off the fabric. If you used thin lines, you might have to wash the fabric in lukewarm water, almost barely warm, I would say, with a lot of soap. Um, I would say that you want the, so the water to be really sudsy um, just because you want that friction from the soap in the water to get the glue off without removing too much of the paint. So. I have all of my color on here and I'm going to let this dry and you can see there is a little bleeding going on and like I said that's totally fine. Um, it is because it is a thin cotton fabric so it will kind of bleed especially if you didn't put enough glue in some of these spaces you can tell that the glue kind of disappeared a little bit that's totally fine. So let your piece dry I'm gonna let this dry and I will show you a picture of this when it's all finished. So after it's dry, like I said, you want to, and I mean completely dry, to the touch dry, the glue, the paint, everything should be dry. You want to either peel your glue off or you might have to kind of soak it in really soapy, sudsy, barely warm water. If you soak it for too long and the water is too hot, what's gonna happen is your glue and your paint will come off completely. So you don't want that to happen. You just want to get the glue off. So soapy water, Kind of just swish it in and then rinse it under very cold water and then hang it to dry and then you will have your batik design on fabric. So I can't wait to see what you guys made. Send us a picture at the library so we can post it to our social media if you make a, a nice design. Um, we'll post it up for you. And we have a lot of other kits and fun things coming up so keep an eye out on our calendar and our Facebook and our Instagram. We have some fun videos and some additional art projects for the next couple of months. I hope you guys had so much fun with me today for little stitches and I will see you very soon at the library. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.